Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. I have a super exciting guest here today. I have the Megan Gallagher, who is a TEDx speaker. She is a author. She is a pretty much a mental health content creator all over Instagram. If you haven't seen her Instagram, I don't know where you are, um, but go check her out right now. And so Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Sammy, for having me on. Yes, of course. I know I gave you a brief little intro, but can you just give my listeners a little bit more into what you do, who you are as a person, and talk a little bit about the journey, how you got to this point? Yes. So for those of you listening, my name is Megan Gallagher. Um, I'm a 25-year-old two-time TED Talk speaker, four-time best-selling author, after Buzz TV host, and I'm also a writer for Restyled Magazine and Meditation Magazine, and I run my own wellness podcast um, and also a blog. I wear many hats, and I'm just extremely passionate about speaking and writing and blogging and creating content, whether it's YouTube or Instagram, just really everything focusing around living your best life and mental health and especially, you know, growing up in our generation, I think it's so powerful to have these types of conversations Mm -hmm. because, you know, not just because of COVID or anything else, but our generation, you know, struggles so much with depression, anxiety, and body image issues and just not feeling good enough. So I feel very, very grateful that my own struggles have inspired so many people. And I feel grateful that at 25, you know, I'm, I've come out on the other side and I'm in a much better place, um, you know, mentally. So I just feel very grateful. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And I think that we honestly like jive really well because like I, what you said, literally, I'm like the passion of the same things like content creation, YouTube, podcasting, all that fun stuff like that, writing, like that, just like where I'm at right now. Um, and so what sort of like, sparked you to sort of get into all this like I guess like call it personal development stuff right um and lifestyle stuff and why did you decide and like talk a little bit about your TEDx talk and like why you decided to talk about anxiety and like why you started to you know start to be vulnerable about that and open up and sort of you know inspire others with your story yes so I would say my journey with mental health began as young as I can remember. I have moments that I can think back on in middle school, high school, um, and just, you know, post high school and college where I felt very anxious. I felt uncomfortable all the time. I felt just never good enough in my own skin. And that's something that, you know, I still have moments as an adult where, I scroll on social media and I can feel the thoughts starting to compare my life to other people's lives. And I'm just like, hold up. No, you know, we don't go that way. That's not okay. Um, But it's just really, 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 really powerful when, you know, we become aware of our feelings and our thoughts and our actions and how they all influence each other. So I specifically feel that when I was 14 years old, freshman year, high school is 2010. I remember, I mean, my whole life, you know, I've always had anxiety. I was always like anxious and I never felt comfortable. I just, for me, that was my normal. That was, um, you know, my just normal of how I lived my life. And when I was a freshman year, freshman in high school, I had my first real panic attack and I still remember it like it was yesterday. And I remember I was sitting in my English class, the his, the teacher was talking about the book, The Odyssey, and, um, you know, we were going over just this book, and I all of a sudden felt super hot, sweaty palms, I felt very uncomfortable, and I had to ask my teacher, can I go to the bathroom, and then I, you know, ran off, and um, it's just that moment kind of perpetuated for me the next three years. I was having up to 20 panic attacks a day. I would call my mom all the time from class, you know, under the desk. And I would just say, I need to get out of here. I feel like I'm dying. Um, My, you know, my eating habits, just it affected every area of my life. And 
for me, high school, it was a really good experience, but on the inside, I, um, you know, I really, really, really struggled and I felt so alone in my struggle. So for me, you know, now being this adult, I really never thought I would get to this place to be totally honest. I, I like, I worried so much when I was younger, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to be a functioning adult? you know, am I going to be okay? How am I going to have a job? Like my anxiety, but it's just so full circle because I've, you know, come out on the other side. Um, but it's, you know, it took work and it took wanting to feel better. So I, you know, I owe so many people and things that credit, but I really, um, yeah, I never really thought I would get to this place in my life to be totally honest. That is so powerful. And I thank you for sharing that because I think that, you know, obviously like social media and just like honestly society in general nowadays is turning into this highlight reel that only shows the good. And it's like, you know, sometimes like I'll pop on a podcast and I'll talk about like my mental health journey and people are like, wow, like no one's ever shared something like that before. And I'm like, why not? You know, it's like, it's not like I'm the only one who's ever gone through it before. You know, it's not like this crazy thing. It's like so many people are dealing with it. Um, and so I like, thank you for that. Um, what are some of like your, what's the word? Like things you did that sort of helped you to heal in a sense, right. And sort of, you know, help you begin that journey of like, yes, I have anxiety. Yes. I have this thing in my life that may, may be an obstacle at some points, but how do I manage it in the way that I can sort of live my life the way I want it? while still dealing with this thing? That's a great question. I would say one, I just became super self-aware of my feelings and I had reached the point where I knew that I needed help. And I knew that, I mean, I did not know scientifically what was going on with me. me. I just thought this is how everyone feels, like the fast heart rate, the sweaty palms, you know, having to go to the bathroom like four times in one class period, I really thought that that was how everyone felt. And I did not know that like, it's a real like condition. I just thought, no, this is how I normally feel. I always feel, you know, super just overthinking and shaky. And I didn't know, I didn't know what there was another way to live life. So for one, um, you know, I really just, I knew I needed help. I really just came to that conclusion because my grades were slipping and, um, you know, my eating habits were really abnormal and I, my social life was okay, but I was just so afraid of, you know, having other people see this side of me where I was having these episodes, I would call them. And I genuinely like for real, I thought that they were like, I thought it was a stroke or like a heart attack. I did not know what a panic attack was. And I just, you know, I called it the episodes where it would come and waves and then it would go away and it would come again and go away. And I just would sit through class and just literally like pinch my hands in my sweatshirt pocket and kind of just wait it out. But yeah, it just reached a point where um, it, you know, it was affecting every area of my life. So I had to get help. So I remember towards the end of freshman year, and this had been almost a year of just having all of these panic attacks and suffering alone. And it was really exhausting. Um, but it was crazy because towards the end of freshman year, I remember sitting my parents down after school one day and we were just hanging out. My sister wasn't home yet. So I knew this was the right time to just say something. And, you know, I will never forget it. Um, I just, said, mom, dad, you guys, can I talk to you for a second? And they were like, okay. And they turned off the TV. um, And I just remember, literally, I like gulped and my hands were shaking, but I, you know, I kind of just poured it all out and I cried a lot and it was very scary, but I just will never forget um, the feeling of how liberating it was to really like ask for help and to really just put myself out there Um, and to just, you know, be that person that I was like, you know what, I have to take this step in order to really like reach the next level of my life. So 
for me, it was that moment. And then after literally the week after I had my first therapy session and then for the rest of high school, I, um, you know, my grades got better and I just, I did the best that I could, but I really think that things happen for a reason because, you know, high school academically, I love to be honest about that. I did not do great academically, but I really feel that things happen for a reason because I think that I was meant to like, you know, go through that at that age. And now I can, you know, speak at high schools and colleges and really resonate with, you know, young adults about my story because, um, yeah, you know, I just know that so many people struggle yet they don't feel comfortable or they don't know how to ask for help. Yes, no, a hundred percent. And that is a great segue into my next question. But before I ask it, I just, you know, it is sometimes like so scary to like admit to yourself or to your parents or to any your loved ones that like you are going through this thing and that like you sort of need to like just break down and like ask for help because sometimes it's like you know what no actually like I feel like I'm capable enough to deal with it on my own when in reality you really aren't that capable you know of doing it on your own because like not everything is meant to be done you know on your own so I want to ask like what is your best tip for someone who's like really struggling, but they just don't want to tell anyone because they're afraid they will look like they're weak or they'll look like they can't, you know, they're not self-sufficient enough or they're not responsible or stuff like that. Oh my gosh. I would say my best tip for anyone who is just feeling stuck or they don't feel comfortable. They don't have that support system. I would say one, just admitting it to yourself or, you know, just, um, writing it down on paper, journaling your feelings and your thoughts is a great first step because, you know, you can feel comfortable and safe and you're the only one looking at it. Um, I would also say that there are so many great free resources where you can text a therapist, you can have a live chat room. There's so many blogs and hotlines where it's, you know, literally for free. It's so affordable. And, um, you know, it's right there for you. So I would say, you know, be smart and go online and find resources or centers or places near you. Also, um, you know, really talking to someone you trust. It doesn't have to be a parent. It can be a school teacher. It can be a counselor, a nurse. It can be a sibling, a babysitter, guardian, someone that you just know is going to have your back and you feel very comfortable speaking with them. Um, you know, just really making sure, because I think that is honestly one of the worst things in life is to feel that you are alone with anything you're going through, whether it's mental health issues an addiction, anything you have to really, really, really realize that you are not alone and that someone has been through what you what you're feeling and you will make it out on the other side and there's such you know a freedom in that feeling so i really you know just also you know people listening you can dm me you can reach out to me on instagram like i really do answer you can email me um you know i really like i even though high school was a very long time ago i still you know remember so many moments and vivid memories so i really have you know a big place in my heart for anyone doesn't have to be a teenager but anyone who just is struggling or is in that dark place because i have really been there but you know now i've come out on the other side so i really um you know i have that empathy yes yes and i think that you know for me as well like if anyone listening here needs anything like my dms i always say it my dms are always open because i think it's so important for people to feel like they have someone you know even if they don't know them personally it's like it's you just knowing that i think sometimes it's even better if you don't know them personally because it's like okay like they're not in you know they're not in in my life so they can sort of have like a you know like a, a better perspective on like what's happening because they're only listening to like what i'm saying so you know um but I want to ask because honestly, I'm very curious because I'm 19 right now and I've just sort of started um, learning about entrepreneurship, if you would call it. And I want to know for you at 25, like what, how did you get into sort of like doing your own thing, speaking and writing all that stuff like that? And like, why did you decide to pursue it as like your full-time thing? Well, so I, when I was 
18, graduated high school, moved down to LA and I did two years of community college. I really, you know, I knew that I always was fascinated by science, biology and psychology. So I knew I was going to study, um, you know, something in that field, but right. I reached two years and I realized that I was so unhappy and I, it felt the same way in high school where, you know, I would just and once again, I'm saying this, I'm not encouraging this, but this is just how I really, you know, felt. Um, I always knew I was born to be an entrepreneur. I always, you know, in high school, I would stare out the window and just daydream about this dream life of just traveling and being creative and making things. And so I remember, you know, it had reached two years in community college and I was like, wow, um, you know, this is so not for me. It does not feel right. I'm not happy at all. So I literally just remember calling my parents one day and I just said, you know, mom, dad, I love you guys so much, but I am not happy. And I just know in my heart, I'm meant to be a speaker. I'm meant to be on stage. It's just where I belong. I love creating and doing anything, TV hosting, all that stuff. So I you know, literally just made that decision. And then they said, okay, like, we love you. We're going to support you. So for about the first two or three years, they supported me financially and I feel very lucky. And they allowed me to, um, you know, really just dive head first and to just make it happen. And then over time, I, you know, became financially independent and it was just really, really, really such a blessing. And um, I just feel, you know, I feel lucky, but I also just, I would say that number one tip is just making it happen. Like, don't overthink it. Don't compare yourself to other people. Don't, I think like the biggest dream killer is when you sit around and you're, you know, you start thinking, oh, well, how did he get to that level? And it's just, um, probably cause you know, they just started, you know, you can't sit and think, oh, well, no, it has to be like that. And I don't know. And you just take action and you literally just keep on going and you just make smart choices and you network. And I think it's a mixture of things. Um, but I also feel like things happen for a reason. So it, you know, whether something works out now or it happens in five months, I really feel that just remembering things happen for a reason. And I'm not really religious, but I do believe that there is just a way that things happen in the world and to not get discouraged because for me, you know, getting to the place where I am now, um, you know, it took years, it took seven years and I'm still not where I want to be. Like, you know, as a motivational speaker, 25 is really young. So I, for me, it's like, I have so much ahead of me and I have so many goals and dreams and aspirations. So I, you know, really, um, just, I don't know. It's, I also think I have a lot of inner drive. Like I really think that I owe a lot to my parents because they really taught me hard work and what it means to be on time, to be, you know, present, to be poised and really to show up. And I, I just, yeah, I just, I think when you want it bad enough and when you know that it is possible, like when you tell yourself, like for me to get to the Tony Robbins level, it is possible. Like it's fully possible and just allowing your mind to realize, of course, it's possible. Um, you just, you start to notice, I think things just happen and work out in your favor. So keeping a positive attitude, just making it happen, hustling, you know, building a social media profile. Um, it just, it all, it all will work itself out. Yes, for sure. And I think that for me, it's like, I, like you said, like, I just see that other people have succeeded in this area and I'm like, okay, so it's possible for me too, you know, and just sort of like honing in on that and being like, okay, like I'm here right now. Like, what did they do when they were here? And like, okay, so like, let me do that. You know, let me do X, Y, and Z. And maybe it's not in the same order, but I'm going to do sort of the same things that way, you know, but obviously tailored to like my own needs and stuff like that. So I think that's very, thank you for that. I appreciate that. That was sort of like a selfish question, but it was good. Um, I want to ask you because, you know, mental health and mental, you know, mental health disorders are something that just, you know, sort of sticks with you every day, all day. 
Um, what are some of your like morning, like midday night routine type situations that really help you to sort of set yourself up for the day or, you know, wind down that allow you to sort of get out of your head and just uh, make sure that you're just in the right state for where you need to be? I would say I like live for morning and nighttime routines. It's my favorite thing ever. So for my morning routine, this is something I do every day too. Just, I mean, including the weekends, like I'm a really, um, (laughs) I wake up early, even on Sundays. So I would say one, um, I, every single morning I'm up at 5.00 AM and I love to do some breath work. That's the first thing I do is I just get myself out of bed. I have a yoga mat, you know, next to my bed, I lie on the ground and I just do breath work for 30 minutes. And to me, that is, you know, just like really deep breathing to kind of get, you know, into my body and to get present and focused. And then I also love to just do some journaling. So I'll, you know, take out pen and a paper and I'll just journal immediately how I'm feeling that morning and, you know, really checking in with myself and thinking, um, you know, how am I feeling? You know, what's going on in my life? What do I need to get done today? How can I be the best Megan possible? And I really love to just, you know, check in with myself. And then I like to have a large, um, you know, like water bottle filled with warm water and lemon and raw honey and just squeeze it together, drink that on an empty stomach. And then I love to do green juice. So I have a juicer here in my apartment. So I'll do either cucumber juice or celery juice. And I'll just drink that on an empty stomach to really get my system going. And then um, I also love to make smoothies. So I'm a huge health nut and I love, you know, kale and um, chia seeds and yogurt, um, anything like cacao powder, just to make it super healthy and filling. And then, so, and then, you know, after I typically, depending on, you know, what's going on the day, because every day looks different for me, I either do a workout and maybe I'll go on a run for an hour. I'll do a virtual Zoom Pilates class. I will just do yoga kind of intuitively, you know, how my body is feeling. And then, and then after I work out, I'll shower, hair, makeup, and then I check all of my emails and texts. So for me, the morning routine is so important because it's just, you know, it sets up your day for success. And I personally always feel better when I wake up and I do what I want to do instead of like just scrolling. I always feel like that's the worst way to start your day. Like you'll just, you'll never feel, it's just, yeah, I don't, I I avoid that. (laughs) No, a hundred percent. And I think that for me, like I'm an early riser too. And then when I you know, first started like having like a structured morning routine, I guess you can call it. Um, It really transformed everything for me. And I just like, I've continued it ever since. And it's just been so wonderful. Um, I want to know, give me a minute. I lost my train of thought. I was like, wait, I was like there and I wasn't there. Um, Nighttime routine. Oh yes. Share it, share it. (laughs) Oh, my nighttime routine. So I mean, once again, you know, every day looks different for me. Sometimes I'm working on pieces for magazines. Sometimes I am doing Instagram lives. Um, I also, you know, balance just my social life and being a human being. So whether that's hanging out with friends or having people over for dinner, um, also traveling. So typically, and I like to keep a consistent schedule, even if I am traveling, I think consistency really builds, you know, success. So Every single night at 6 p.m., I, you know, kind of, I'm done for the day, like emails, everything goes off. Um, And then I love to wind my day down. So I'll have dinner. I love cooking. So I'll cook some dinner. I like drinking tea. Um, I turn off all electronics. I'm not really a big TV person. I really, um, you know, I love just reading a book. I love journaling. I love doing yoga, going for a walk, um, you know, anything. And then every night by 8 45 PM, I'm in bed, like everything makeup off, just like ready to go to bed. So I like, it's very (laughs) organized, but to me, that's how I function best is getting enough sleep and feeling really well rested and feeling I, to me, 
I think I love the routines because it makes me feel um, super confident. Like it makes me feel really organized and very prepared. And that's how I feel like my best self. Yes. No, seriously. And I'm such a, such an advocate for routines. Um, you know, I still like, even though it doesn't look the same as it used to, I'm still just like, I'm so forward. I'm really trying to get back into like more of a healthier routine. Cause right now it's like, I get up and like, then I like run to Dunkin' then I come back and then I'm like, you know, just like scrambling all over the place. I'm trying to like get back into my routine that I had before where it was like, you know, get up at 5.30 and like, I mean, I used to get up at like, what, like 3.30 in the morning, you know, and start my routine then. Yeah, I know, it was crazy. Um, because, well, because I started school at uh, 7.30 in high school, right? And so I, I had like drive to the gym and drive back and all the fun stuff like that. So that is sort of, I needed like a few hours just, you know, to do that. So um, but nowadays it's like, because I'm in college and because it's like all online, it looks much different. So I'm not really leaving my room that much, which means I don't really have to, um, sort of like get ready or like go out, you know, like go places as much. So it's, um, very interesting to have, you know, to sort of develop a routine now, but I want to ask you going back to sort of like the entrepreneur type situation, like how did you learn about entrepreneurship? How did you know about it? And how did you sort of figure out, what you wanted to do that could really help you um, sort of, you know, make money and just like grow your personal brand? Yes. So I would say I, I, I just personally have felt that I always was born to be an entrepreneur. I think the telltale signs, I really was not personally invested in academics. I, you know, really had no interest in anything they were teaching in school except for PE. I loved moving my body. Like I just, it was certain things, um, you know, for me growing up when I was in high school, every single day I would rush home just to catch, um, the reruns of the Ellen show. I loved the Oprah show. I loved Rob Deerdeck's fantasy factory. I loved, you know, just all of these shows. I really, really, really resonated with the buried life. I loved um, you know, all these fun shows about creative people who kind of paved their own path in life and really, you know, did it themselves. So I think for me, it just has always come naturally. Um, but I would say when I started my business at 18, I really, you know, I just dove head first in my situation specifically, thankfully my parents, you know, could support me financially when I was just getting started. Um, but I really, you know, I just made it happen. Like I did not know how to, um, you know, make a business card. Like I didn't know how to do anything. I just taught myself. I went online, made business cards, taught myself, made my first website. And then I would go around to Whole Foods and put my business cards up on the, you know, the community boards by the bathroom. Cause I thought that would be a good idea. And I, like, I just kept on going. And I think that's a key part is never being too humble because one thing that I've really learned is no matter what level you get to, even Oprah Winfrey, um, you know, you still have to work really hard. It's not like, oh, I've reached, you know, this level so I can just chill and there's people to do things for me. No, it's like quite the opposite. Like you still have to hustle and to work really hard and um, you know, you may have more money, you may have a bigger house, you may have a nicer seat on the plane, but you still have to work really hard and you have to make smart choices and, you know, still manage your budget. Like it just, you can, you know, go up, but it just never changes the mindset of like hustler, let's make it happen. So, but yeah, you know, I remember just running around, I would put my business card anywhere. I would go to PTA meetings. I would find them online and just show up in person and give out my business card. Um, I would just literally, you know, find people online. I would send hundreds of emails every single day. I would go to Barnes and Noble and I would read magazines and I would, um, you know, find out who the editor is. And then I would send them an email and write down their email address, pitch myself, I just literally, you know, kept my eyes on the prize and I just made it happen any way I could. And, um, you know, eventually it took time, but eventually it really worked out. And I think you just have to have thick skin and just persevere. Like 
it does not matter if someone tells you no or people are and you just keep going and there's always going to be you know if one thing doesn't work out there's always another way and another door will open and i feel like when you have that mindset that everything is happening just as it should and just because that door closed doesn't you know something else can happen when you keep on believing that i feel like it keeps on happening and um you know, I just, I believe that you just, just make it happen. You know, you like, especially for people listening, like you, Sammy, like you're so young and you have so much potential and you're such a great host and your talent is extraordinary. And, you know, it's also awesome because in today's world, you know, anything is possible over social media. It's not the typical eighties, nineties, early two thousands where you need an agent and you need this you know, there's so many people who don't have an agent and a team of people, but you don't even need that. Like social media, you can make money having a lot of followers and you can grow your, you know, following. So I think it's just the times we live in, anything is possible. Yes. Yes. I definitely agree. Uh, You know, and I think that that's the biggest thing. It's like, people are like, yeah, no, I'll do it in, you know, a new year from now or in five years from now. But it's like, no, it's like, it, it so much better when you could just do it right now, you know? Yes. So I want to ask you, what is your biggest piece of advice for that young Megan who was like suffering in high school and just didn't really know what was going on with her? I would say what adult Megan would say to yes. little um I would say just like I would I would say just like everything as long as you work hard and as long as you trust your gut feeling and just everything will work itself out and to not worry and to just like this too shall pass because I think when you're in the midst of a struggle whether you know, it's depression or anxiety, or especially right now, you know, COVID seems like we're on a never ending merry-go-round ride. And it's for people, you know, it's driving them literally crazy and it's horrible. And it's, you know, for people who have anxiety, it's, it's like torture. It's awful. It's every day on the news. It's like, when is this going to end? When is this going to be over? So I think, you know, um, for a lot of people, for myself included, it's just reminding yourself that this too shall pass Mm -hmm. like yes you know things may i don't know what a new normal is going to look like but things will get better and they always do and it's just keeping that positive attitude no matter what season of life you're in and no matter what is going on in your life i really feel like you can't go wrong if you have Mm -hmm. a good heart and you are positive and you you know show up on time and you're just have a good energy and you really work hard, I feel like literally anything is possible because, you know, if you think about it, like the people that we all look up to, whether it's Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, whomever, they all started somewhere. And, you know, for a lot of people, they did not grow up in families with a lot of money. They did not, you know, so just reminding yourself that every single person that you see started somewhere. And, you know, what we see on Instagram, it's literally just a highlight reel. So I think keeping in mind, you know, when you're seeing this person doing all these amazing things, one, you know, it's just spreading kindness to that person because, you know, success should be rewarded, but also remembering, you know, do you know them in real life? Have you met them? Because you don't want to judge, you know, yourself or other people and you don't want to come to come to conclusions and you know kind of drive yourself crazy trying to think oh my gosh you know how do they have that car and how do because we really don't know unless you've literally sat them down and you're like tell me your whole entire life story so i think it's just good for our mental well-being to just you know stay positive towards ourselves towards other people but to also you know keep in mind that once again, do you, do you know their whole entire life story? Because if not, then you should not be, you know, just driving yourself, torturing yourself, trying to wonder, you know, how they can afford this and how is that possible? Because you really don't know the whole entire story. Yes. Yes. That is very, very true. And that's why, you know, I'm sort of like, whenever I see other people, I'm like, okay, like they're doing that. Like, let me take note of that, but know that like, 
you know, they're probably at a different stage in their life than I am or in their entrepreneur journey as, as, as that I am. So it, you know, it's, it's like, it's like nowadays, it's like, just take what you see with like a very, you know, little grain of salt, because it's like, it's not everything that's going on in their life. Exactly. And it's just, you know, it's so easy though, to fall into the trap of, yeah. oh, you know, their life must be so amazing because, you know, they post pictures with these people and anything like that. So right. it's just important to remember that, you know, we, um, you know, we may not know exactly how they got to where they are and it's not good for ourselves to judge or to try to like, you know, solve this puzzle of like, because we don't know. And, you know, um, I think it's just better just to spread kindness to people because in the long run, you know, when we all are 90 years old and we all are looking back on our life, I think it's really, um, you know, powerful to just remember that life goes by quickly and it's important to just be mindful of how you treat other people because, People remember, you know, your words and how you made them feel. People don't really remember, you know, what kind of car you drove, even though it's like, it's so good to work hard and to have goals, of course. Mm -hmm. But even I have to remind myself sometimes, you know, what's going to matter in 60 years? Like, is yeah. it really, you know, these things or it's just, I think it's good to just continuously, you know, check in with yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For sure. Before uh, we roll into the final question that I ask every guest, where can people find you on social and just on the web in general? Um, so my handle, so it's at Megan W. Gallagher, and that is Instagram. My website is also MeganWGallagher.com. Yes. Um, I have Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. I have YouTube. I also have a TikTok. Um, and I have my podcast reaching new heights and a new episode drops every Monday. Um, I also have a lot of projects going on. I recently did a self-care Sunday series with sports mm. illustrated swim model, Kate Bach. And then we got featured in people and Yahoo and it was amazing. And I currently am working on a mental health video series similar to that, but this one is specifically about mental health and raising awareness for brain trauma. And that's with Olympic snowboarder, Jake Pates. And we are so excited. We're gonna launch it next week. Um, and then I also have, you know, pieces that I've written for Meditation Magazine and I have those and it's just so amazing. But yes, basically Instagram, I would say is my main profile where I post everything. Um, but I do, I'm everywhere on social media. I'm really, really active. And I also, um, you know, currently I'm just working on a new book, which I'm really excited about. That is going to be out um, in April of next year. I am editing it right now and working on it with my team and I'm super excited. Um, and then fingers crossed, we're going to go on a virtual book tour. Um, but, you know, depending on COVID and what happens, um, things could be up in the air, but book tour next year for sure fun fun and all of her links will be in the show notes below um so let's roll into the final question this is a question like i said before that i've asked every single guest who has ever been on the podcast so that's like what 50 ish guests at this point um so based off of the title of this podcast which is fashion your passion what is one tip that you would give those who are dreaming based on how you have fashioned your passion my biggest tip would be never settle. It would be just stick to what feels right to you and just know that literally like anything is possible and just to not give up. I think, um, you know, you can't get it wrong when you're working hard and when you're keeping your eyes focused on where you want to be and you just, you know, you can't mess up what's meant for you. So I think just telling yourself those positive things of, whatever, you know, whatever you believe in, it's just, I personally believe that whatever is meant for you, it can't miss you. So I think just reminding yourself that just keeping a positive attitude. 
I love it. So good. Thank you so much again, Megan, for coming on. It was a pleasure to have you. And I am super excited for our listeners to listen to this episode. If you are listening, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast and screenshot you listening to it. Tag Megan and I and let us know what you learned. Thanks so much for listening.